to Southampton Common, 365 acres of vast woodland, parkland, lakes, trees and pathways. A land so big it was Southampton in the city's early history. Now a place where people got to sunbathe, walk dogs and kick footballs. However, there is more to it than sunshine and sports. So sit back and relax as we dive into common knowledge. I'm here in the middle of the Southampton Common, lovely social area, places where people go when the weather's very nice. However, its origins were very different, as Solomon James will now explain. In 1215, the Magna Carta enshrines common law as a feature in, in UK society. This was very close to the year 1228, in which the Southampton Common was founded. In the year 1228, the Lord Burgess of Southampton successfully won her legal bid against Nicholas de Shell in order to gain ownership of the Southampton Common. What made the Southampton Common different to those of the time was what it meant to the people of Southampton. Instead of Southampton Common being limited to a select few members of a householder, Southampton Common was accessible to those who paid. The rights of the common people were however limited, as in the years 1549 to 1569, there were laws in place that prevented the common people from owning a number of animals. These laws prevented commoners from owning two or more beasts, which included horses, sheep and bullock. Despite these restrictions, from the years 1644 to 1762, there were commercial developments that happened on the common. Namely, the cohorts began a process of selling alcohol. Soon after the common became the people's, it was stripped away through laws known as the Enclosure Act. More on that. Southampton Common, the natural heart of the modern day city, has been important to the life of its citizens for centuries gone by. The commons lands were vital for the farmers for making a living and the community around depended on their resources. These lands used to be much faster than they are today, proving how integral they were to life here on the south coast. However, at the turn of the 16th century, that would change forever. Essentially, the Enclosure Act allowed privatisation of the many common lands across the United Kingdom, severely damaging the local communities around them in the process. Southampton Common was first affected in 1594 when the local town council enclosed some of the land for the use of the town, although the majority of the common remained public. The boundaries of the common remained largely the same until 1733 when Lord John Ashley came and enclosed a large amount of land for nothing more than his own use. In his words, he made the land more productive. In 1768, Lord Ashley enclosed even more land, massively restricting the use of the common for the public. This time, however, he was forced to pay compensation to those he displaced. By the 19th century, Southampton Common looked much more similar to how it looks today. Many local communities were forced to move to larger cities and aid the Industrial Revolution. Those who remained in Southampton used what was left of the common for more leisurable activities as it saw the construction of the Boating Lake and sports facilities. So, after the origins of the common were set, we moved to slightly more modern times in the 1800s where race courses and bare knuckle fighting were commonplace, as we shall see. Today I would like to take you back in time to the 19th century, where Southampton Common was the epicentre of bare knuckle fighting and horse racing. It was a time when the thrill of the race and the excitement of the fight captured the hearts and minds of the people of Southampton. The race tracks on the common were a spectacle to behold. The thundering sound of the hooves, the cheers of the crowd and the intense competition between horses and riders all created an electric atmosphere. The racetracks on the common were a place of celebration, where people would come together to enjoy the thrill of the sport and socialise. However, it wasn't just horse racing that drew crowds to Southampton Common. Bare knuckle fighting was also a popular pastime during this time. Fighters would step into the ring, strip to the waist and without gloves, and engage in brutal combat. It was a test of strength, endurance and skill. Fighters would come from all over to test their mettle and prove themselves in the ring. The history of bare knuckle fighting on the Southampton Common is a colourful one, 
with many legends and stories surrounding the sport. It was a dangerous and often brutal affair with little regard for safety of the fighters. But for those who participated, it was a way of life, a means of survival and a source of pride. Despite the danger, the sport of bare knuckle fighting and horse racing on Southampton Common brought people together. It was a time when class divisions were stark and the opportunity to enjoy a shared experience was rare. The racetracks and bare knuckle rings were a place where all could come together, regardless of their background or social standing. The racetracks and bare knuckle rings of Southampton Common during the 19th century were more than just a place to enjoy sport and entertainment. In 1961, a man named Jimmy Chipperfield saw an opportunity to use the land known as the Common for a show attracting many people from the surrounding area and from afar. Jimmy was already a successful circus owner at the time, and once he had leased the land from the local council, the zoo was opened. Jimmy originally proposed a relatively small zoological pets corner with limited animals, whereas after being built, this ultimately only formed a small part of the show, and the zoo quickly grew to house many exotic animal, animals of all kinds. Many older residents of Southampton may have fond memories of Southampton Zoo. Many such animals included lions, tigers, zebras, giraffes, bears, rhinos, and even an elephant named Mary. The zoo also ha housed two water areas for king penguins and sea lions to add to the variety of animals. The poor welfare of the animals at Southampton was highlighted by famous British actresses such as v Virginia McKenna and Joanna Lumley. They both led a campaign against the poor conditions and animal right abuses about Southampton Zoo that culminated in a protest march through Hoglands Park in the city centre. Almost a year after Virginia McKenna's demonstration, the animals were rounded up and taken away and the zoo closed its doors for good in 1985. Since 1985, many current residents of the city of Southampton don't know the zoo even existed, with many of the enclosures and equipment disappearing rapidly over time. However, today, there are still the pools that remain where the children's playground is now. As the world entered the 20th century, the Southampton Common became a hotbed for activity, mainly helping the English war effort, with camps set out in World War I and World War II, as well as its uses after the war, both of equal importance. As early as 1904, Southampton Common was used as a rest camp for soldiers to be taken into Europe and the wider world. We know very little about the divisions that were stationed in this camp at the time, but archive images show us that the camp was constructed of tents, meaning that the camps were both movable but also degradable. However, ten years later, during the First World War, Southampton Common was called upon again to become a military camp. We do not know what divisions were stationed on the common, as most would not stay for very long before heading to the continent. However, what we do know is that in 1915, a YMCA hut was constructed on the common, telling us that the well-being of the soldiers was taken into consideration. This YMCA hut was manned by local Southampton residents, solidifying bonds between the military and the people of Southampton. The huts provided soldiers present on the common with entertainment, often in the form of music, once again performed by Southampton residents, as well as providing refreshments. Following the First World War, Southampton Common was called upon once again to act as a marshalling camp in preparation for the D-Day invasion. Southampton's central location on the south coast, as well as its vast ports, made it the perfect area for a marshalling camp. The camps on the Common were designated C-18 through to 21. Following the D-Day invasions, one of the camps, C-19, was turned into a prisoner of war camp to accommodate German soldiers captured during the fighting. Even once the common had been handed back to the people, the scars of war still remained. Barbed wire fences surrounded the common and its boundaries, rusting and falling apart with children playing in between them. The huts themselves played an even larger role than the barbed wire fences that were strung along the common. Quonset huts found a myriad of new purposes post-war. One of the most immediate and pressing needs that these huts fulfilled was the housing for the people of Southampton whose homes had been damaged or destroyed during the Blitz. These huts acted as immediate and temporary housing for families seeking to rebuild their lives. Eventually, in 1970, the final hut was demolished. It was described as a historic ceremony for Southampton. A ceremonial sledgehammer blow knocked down the front door of the hut before a bulldozer was sent in to finish the job. The destruction of the final hut marks the end of Southampton Common's military history. The experts have proven it has a variety of uses and social aspects. As such, the common should be utilised in the post-Covid world. Concerts, parks, football pitches, basketball courts, especially should be commonplace, as it brings a sense of togetherness and community within Southampton. This also allows other people to come in and explore the wonderful city and see the beautiful community that it creates.